Hello and welcome to Just Ride Bikes. I'm David and this is a brand new Canyon Grizzle. In this video, I'll tell you what this new bike is like to ride, go through the frame and equipment details, talk about value for money and give my verdict at the end of the video. And if you're new around here and you like what you see, then maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Okay, let's dive in. It doesn't take long to get into the Grizzle Groove and it's right at home on gravel, road, dirt, single track, woodland trails, you name it, it shines everywhere. And it really does everything you want and expect from a gravel bike. It's fast enough, it's capable enough, it's versatile enough. It's just brilliant fun. The Grizzle is a brand new gravel bike from a German bike company, but it's not actually the first gravel bike. They launched a Grail a few years ago with a very distinctive double-decker handlebar and a bike designed for racing and performance. And then they followed up with the Alloy Grail with a normal handlebar and a cheaper price point. When I reviewed the Grail last year, link down below if you missed that, I was really impressed with the bike. Super fast, good handling, great on the road and fast gravel like this and even the handlebar won me over eventually. But I know that double-decker handlebar wasn't for everybody and did put a lot of people off. So thankfully here, we have a normal round handlebar with a lot of generous bar tape and nice short stem. And it is an easier bike to adapt for bike packing and other adventure riding. Much easier to fit accessories on the front, bar bag, all that sort of stuff is much easier fit to a normal round handlebar. Let me point out some key details you need to know about this brand new Canyon Grizzle. So at the moment, it's a carbon frame only option with a choice of a CFSL, which I have here, and a CFSLX. And the difference is in the carbon fiber layup and therefore the frame weight. They claim 950 grams for the CFSLX and about 100 grams extra for a CFSL. So tire clearance is really big news here and we now have space for up to a 50 millimeter wide tire and all bikes are sold with a 45 millimeter wide tire as standard. And then we have lots of accessory mounts, three on the fork, two on the top tube. The CFSL gets a third bottle cage, which the CFSLX doesn't. And then we have mud guard or fender mounts, which makes it a really good option for winter riding, fits on fat slicks, some mud guards, and you have a commuting and winter training bike. In many ways, at least visually, the new Grizzle has a lot in common with the Endurace or road bike. All the frame profiles and tube shapes are very similar. And we also have the same internal seat clamp, which is dropped much lower than the top tube to allow a seat post to bend more, give more comfort when you're in the saddle. And then we have the very unique VCLS split seat post, which you find on many Canyon road and gravel bikes like the Grail and the Endurace. They don't put it on their top end road race bikes like the Ultimate and Air Road, but most bikes in the range do get it. And it's a very simple method to give more seated comfort. It's a split seat post, so split down the middle, two carbon halves fixed at the bottom and acts like a leaf spring basically and allows the saddle to flex back and forth much more than a normal fixed rigid seat post. The new Grizzle is available in a wide range of price points and they're all fairly competitive when it comes to the equipment you get for your money, as we come to expect from Canyon over the years. The prices start at £2,200 and go right up to £5,000, with this model costing just under £3,000 for this, the CFSL8. And it's probably the pick of the range. It's ready for adventure right from the box, with a few future upgrades if you want it down the line. So this model has a Shimano GRX 800 one by group set with mechanical shifting and hydraulic disc brakes. It's a group set that works really well, great ergonomics from the new hoods, super reliable shifting and quiet and durable. The only real downside is a slightly limited range at the lower end of the cassette on this bike here, which is especially a factor if you're riding very steep hills and you're riding with bike packing bags when the bike can double in weight but there are ways you can hack the group set by fitting a bigger cassette. Just have a look on the internet, uh, quite an easy fix if you want lower gears 
but that's the only real wrinkle with the group set. And hopefully that's something that Shimano might address with version two of GRX whenever that comes out. All bikes are spec with 45 millimeter wide tires. And on this bike, we have Schwalbe's G1 Bite tire. So G1 is a really popular long running gravel tire and the bite simply has more bite than the normal version, the all round or the speed with slightly deeper knobs, which gives better traction when it's loose and slippery. And it really is a good fit and forget tire. For all but the deepest winter sloppy conditions, it's a fast rolling grippy tire and in my experience durable with no cuts to the sidewall or the top of the tire at all and tubeless naturally as well. The tires are mounted the DT Swiss G1800 spline wheels and DT Swiss is an easy no-brainer choice when it comes to wheels. Super wide alloy rims, easy tubeless, bladed spokes, external nipples, super reliable hub internals and a fast engaging free hub. The only downside on these is the weight is a little high but that is a potential future upgrade down the line if it's on lighter wheels if you're weight weenie. But for bike packing and adventure riding, these are tough and durable and really hard to criticize, to be honest. Okay, that's enough talk about the frame and equipment. Let's go for a ride and see how it performs. And I've been riding a bike for the last three or four weeks, mostly here in the Cotswolds on my local well-trodden gravel tracks. And also a trip to Scotland where I found some really, really good gravel and also did an overnight bike packing adventure, which you might have seen linked above. So really putting it through paces and using it for what it's designed for. This definitely isn't what the Americans would call gravel. This is man's bike, single track, which I ride all my gravel bikes on. <laughs> it's so much fun. And bikes like this Grizzle can handle it surprisingly well. And this really showcases the, the versatility of bikes like this Grizzle. But they can handle everything from road to gravel to twisting single track with roots and other obstacles to contend with. Does this count as gravel? Probably not, but it's a lot of fun. So this is a good place to talk about comfort. And here, the gristle definitely impresses when it comes to seated comfort. We've got big tyres doing a lot of the heavy lifting at low pressures. So I'm talking 30 PSI maximum. And then we've got that split seat post, which does a lot of flexing thanks to a low clamp in the seat tube. And then we have the fantastic physique saddle, which bends loads in the middle and gives a hammock-like comfort to your bottom and really does isolate your back from a lot of vibrations. And what that means is you can stay on the power, keep pedaling, you're not being jolted around. The front end, meanwhile, is on a par with other gravel bikes. Not quite as smooth as a Grail with a double-decker handlebar and not as smooth as possibly the class leading bike in this respect, the Specialized Diverge. One solution to adding more comfort to the front of the Grizzle would be fitting a suspension stem, like that Redshift I'm currently testing on my own Fairlight. But unfortunately, we have the oversized one and a quarter inch steer tube on this bike, like Giant Overdrive 2, which means you can't yet fit a suspension stem like that one. So that's a bit of a shame. But it's not all that bad. Got some fat bar tape and a fat front tire it's a reasonably smooth ride. And back on the road, the gristle morphs really neatly into a fat tired endurance road bike. And even with the tires at low pressures and as wide as they are, it trucks on the road pretty quickly. And chuck another set of wheels in there with some fat slick tires fitted. And it'd be great to winter road bike with mud guards for commuting and road training. So super versatile, as many people want from a gravel bike. One question I've had a lot while riding this bike is how fast is it compared to the Grail? And it's an obvious comparison. Well, simply put, it's fast, but I don't think quite as fast as the Grail. The Grail with its narrower tyres and that double-decker handlebar does give a more aggressive race-focused performance. And if you're racing, doing long-distance gravel riding at speed, the Grail, it can be a faster companion. But make no mistake, this bike is not slow. And it's fast enough for me, I'm sure fast enough for most people who, let's face it, probably aren't racing 
or buy a gravel bike for racing, more for the versatility and ability to do a bike packing adventure, throw some gravel riding with some road riding and just generally mix it all up and have a bit of fun. But if you are racing, be no doubt this bike will still be fast enough but for pure speed, the Grail probably has the edge. The geometry also has quite a lot in common with the Endurace road bike as well. Similar head angle, but then a key difference is the wheelbase, which is much longer. We have a longer top tube and a shorter stem with a slightly wider handlebar as well. So you should be able to get the same fit roughly as your road bike, but get the performance benefits of a shorter stem, wider handlebar that this sort of mountain bike inspired geometry does offer. And with that geometry, I think it's fair to say Canyon has struck a fairly conservative balance, which probably hits a sweet spot for most people coming from road bikes to off-road gravel bikes like this. Yes, they could have been more progressive and more adventurous with the geometry and taking a few more cues from mountain bikes, as we've seen with some other exciting gravel bikes at the moment. And that middle ground works perfectly here in the UK where gravel takes on a vast array of descriptions of surfaces and trails, from well-groomed gravel to single track trails in the woods like this. But it's a step in the right direction. And Canyon is fair to say, a fairly conservative when it comes to geometry. We see this on the mountain bikes. So it's probably the right approach for them and for the customer base. I might bring my lawnmower up here next time. Where's the trail go? Over to the left a little bit, somewhere down here. Around to the right a little bit. So there we are then. I've shown you what it's like to ride. I've gone through the frame and equipment details and talked about the key features on this bike. And in summary, it's a fantastic, no nonsense, do everything you want, gravel adventure bike packing option, which I think for most people here in the UK at least, does everything you want and expect from a gravel bike. It's fast enough, it's versatile enough, and it's definitely capable enough. Yes, there are gravel bikes with more comfort, like a Specialized Diverge, and bikes with better off-road geometry, like the BMC Unrestricted. But for most people, I think they probably hit a sweet spot. And it looks fantastic. I definitely love the paint job on this bike. So that concludes my review of the Canyon Gristle, and hopefully answers any questions you might have about this new bike, and if there's anything I missed, do feel free to leave a comment down below. But that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.